Coming up on Ag Week TV, a new NAFTA deal is struck with U.S. dairy producers, the big winners. We'll have highlights from the World Dairy Expo. It's been a challenging season for hay and alfalfa production here in southeast South Dakota. I'll have the story coming up. And a North Dakota cooperative celebrates a milestone. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Rose Dunn. This week we take our show on the road to Wisconsin for the very first time. We're there because of the World Dairy Expo. It's in Madison, Wisconsin, and our Michelle Rook has more from America's Dairyland. Rose, the World Dairy Expo is celebrating its 52nd year here in Madison, and it's the meeting place of the global dairy industry. It includes world-class dairy cattle shows and sales of all breeds, the world's largest dairy-focused trade show featuring the latest in dairy innovation, plus dairy and forage educational opportunities. And organizers are excited about this year's numbers. Cattle numbers are going to be almost exactly what they were last year. Our commercial exhibitors, we have 890 different companies represented this year from 30 different countries. And uh, we actually have 99 new companies that are exhibiting at World Dairy Expo for the first time this year. So uh, we're very, very excited about that. More than 70,000 people from 100 countries attend this event annually. Of course, the big buzz this week has been the new NAFTA deal that was finalized over the weekend between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. And it's a deal that is being praised by the agricultural community. The USMCA retained zero tariffs on most ag goods flowing between the trading partners. Progress was also made with Canada agreeing to grant imported wheat the same access as Canadian wheat with the same requirements. But the dairy industry was the big winner as Canada will gradually eliminate its Class 7 pricing scheme for dairy products and allow more access to U.S. dairy products. Chris Galen is joining us here from World Dairy Expo to talk more about what the USMCA means for the dairy industry. And first of all, getting rid of the Class 7 milk pricing system from Canada was big, wasn't it? Yes, this was something that Canada was using to avoid its obligations to limit the amount of exports it subsidizes. So this is a major achievement for us. It will take time to phase that in and for Canada to limit its export subsidies. But this was one of our major goals in these NAFTA talks. So Chris, how long will that phase out take? Well, the first thing we have to find out is when is NAFTA going to be approved by our Congress. I say NAFTA, it's the renamed agreement now. Mm -hmm. It'll take a while for Congress to approve it. It also has to be approved by the other, other governments. And so only then will the clock start ticking in terms of the phase in of all these provisions. It's going to be a matter of probably several years before all that happens. The U.S. will get more market access into Canada though, right? How much? Yes, well, we're going to get just over three and a half percent of their market when that is phased in over time. And again, that is a multi-year process. And so we're, we are appreciative of that and all the hard work that the Trump administration did in order to give us a better position than what we have now with Canada. We don't want to forget though the fact that Mexico, we still have steel and aluminum import tariffs on them and there's some reciprocal tariffs going back the other way, right? Yes, we were hoping that once this agreement was announced that that would also be accompanied by a lifting of the tariffs against Canada and Mexico and then Mexico would lift its tariffs against our agricultural exports. That has yet to happen and it needs to because that would be this other sort of stimulus in the short term to our dairy markets. All right, thanks so much for that analysis. Chris Galen here from the World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin. Alfalfa producers in the Western Corn Belt are wrapping up production after an extremely frustrating season due to Mother Nature. I headed to the fields in South Dakota, one of the top alfalfa producing states in the nation, to get the story. Record rains and flooding in southeast South Dakota made it one of the most challenging seasons for putting up good quality alfalfa that most producers, like Gary Freeberg, can ever remember. The only one that ever topped it here was 84. We received 20 plus inches of rain in June and another six inches of rain in July. That flooded thousands of acres of cropland, especially along the river bottom. And alfalfa is a crop that doesn't like wet feet. So he says many alfalfa meadows were damaged. We have anywhere from, from slight damage to moderate damage to a lot of damage to where it's just a complete wipeout. The result is tonnage will be down substantially for alfalfa producers in one of the top forage production areas in the nation. For our operation, uh, I would say uh, right at uh, 
you know, somewhere in between 40 and, and 60%. I'll know more about it when we get done with the fields. And hay quality, which is important, especially for dairy producers, has also suffered. Quality is really off this year. Um, the first cutting went up okay. Second cutting when we got into June, third cutting when we got into July, just a challenge. So Freebergs have cleaned up the field, salvaged what alfalfa they can, and will look forward to a new season. The bright spot is less high quality alfalfa means increased demand and stronger alfalfa prices. When we come back to Ag Week TV later in the show, I'll be back at the World Dairy Expo with more from Madison, Wisconsin. And Rose Dunn will have a look at a North Dakota co-op that's hitting a milestone, plus the growing marketing opportunities for sheep producers. My name is Joel Kaler owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. Helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. When grain flow becomes blocked in your bin, it can cause costly delays, safety concerns, and expensive equipment repairs. Superior Grain Equipment's premium unloading system, featuring their patented Blockbuster Auger, keeps you and your equipment running safely and efficiently by breaking up blockages near the center sump gate to allow for continuous grain flow. Operated from outside the bin, the Blockbuster could be engaged independently from the sweep, eliminating the need to enter the bin to clear blockages. Superior products for superior bins. Only available from Superior Grain Equipment. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have it a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, more people can eat. Explore the convergence of agriculture and technology at Cultivate 2018 on November 15th. Cultivate is an emerging technology in agriculture conference hosted by Emerging Prairie of Fargo. Connect with industry leaders and farmers and learn about how the latest tech innovations are being utilized in agriculture. For more information, visit EmergingPrairie.com. When harvest comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. North Star Ag offers the Loftness Grain Logics Grain Bag Loader to deliver versatile grain storage performance load after load. Loftness's user friendly grain baggers are easy to load and unload, perfect to get your harvest in the bag. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full service Meridian Hopper Bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. Ag Week TV, presented by Kaler Farms. The troubled Ashby, Minnesota elevator reopened on Wednesday under a lease to the Wheaton Dumont elevator based in Wheaton, Minnesota. The elevator closed on September 14th after learning its general manager had diverted money for his own use. That number is now up to nearly $5 million. Investigators say Jerry Hennessy used the money for expensive safaris and taxidermy. He has been missing since the fraud was discovered. Members will meet on October 15th to consider options for the future of the elevator. Once 25 grain elevators dotted the southwest North Dakota and southeast Montana area served by the Beach Cooperative Grain Company. Despite mergers and consolidations, the Beach Co-op is still going strong. As Jonathan Knutson found, it's celebrating its 100th anniversary and continues to build for the future. Many things have changed in egg during the past century, but the Beach Cooperative Grain Company is still going strong, still serving patrons in its wide trade area. Loyal patrons who are conservative in values but yet progressive have allowed us to stay independent through 100 years and uh, loyal employees who are good at their work, I think that's the two keys. The co-op has about 1,200 patrons. About 250 of them are active farmers growing a wide range of crops. Spring wheat, winter wheat, durum, uh, canola, 
peas, lentils, sunflowers, and corn. And those are probably our biggest ones. Then we've got a few smaller growers that'll do oats or mustard or flax and a lot of those specialty crops. That prompted the co-op to take on a major new project. It's partnered with Fargo-based Anchor Ingredients to build a new pulse plant described as state-of-the-art. The total price tag is about $11 million. It'll be a great asset for our customers. As we do more and more crop rotations, it's It'll bring an, a great market for our local community and we're excited we'll be able to process quite extensively the products we grow locally and serve our patrons. Miski says that being independent gives the flexibility to make the best decisions for its members. In Beach, North Dakota, this is Jonathan Knudsen for Ag Week. You can read more on this story by Jonathan in the latest Ag Week magazine. A man who spent 25 years in ag and rural banking with the American Bankers Association in Washington says he's concerned about the debt positions of some farmers. John Blanchfield was a keynote speaker at a recent ag credit conference in Fargo. He now works for a Maryland company that helps community banks improve their ag lending efforts through both the credit and human component. Blanchfield says he has three main concerns, how long the current low price period lasts, interest rates, and how banks relate with their farm customers. The idea is to not make the same mistakes that, that, that bankers and other lenders made uh, in the 1980s. And so improving communication, improving the human contact, and helping farmers manage through this period. Blanchfield said about 25% of farmers are doing very well, 50% are okay, and 25% are struggling. When Ag Week TV continues, it's back to Michelle at the World Dairy Expo in Wisconsin, where they're talking about low prices. And later, a story women in ag won't want to miss. Aspire is a premium delivery of boron. It's a potash source that has two forms of boron in it. One form of boron is available early in the crop needs. And then we have another form of boron that's more of a slow release. So throughout the whole growth stage or a cycle of a crop, you need to teaspoon feed that crop, especially with these micronutrients. If you need to learn more about boron, what does boron do within the plant? So we have aspireboron.com. There's also cropnutrition.com. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage giving farmers access to data from the elevator right in their pocket, helping them make better decisions. No more keeping track of paper scale tickets. Innovation, it's always been a part of the farming culture. Integrating directly with elevators to give growers real-time information, all through a mobile app. Your elevator, powered by Bushel. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Welcome back to Ag Week TV here from the World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin. 2018 has been another tough year for dairy producers across the nation who have faced another year of depressed milk prices. And unfortunately, experts here at the show see only a modest improvement in milk prices in the near term. I do see an improvement in prices. 
but not a huge improvement. I mean, we're looking at, in my opinion, a little over a dollar a hundred weight improvement, which is good, but it takes us back up to something more like 2017 prices where um, we aren't talking about anything like a 2014 uh, breakout year. However, the mood is still positive among producers at Expo. They're here looking for new technologies and management tools to improve the efficiency of their operations. As a producer, it, it's you respond differently, but I will say that all dairy farmers are looking at cash flows right now, large and small, and uh, trying to figure out what they can invest in that maybe will give them a, a chance at a return in their investment. Merrill also chairs the Midwest Dairy Association, which is working on consumer demand for dairy products to improve prices. While cows are in the spotlight here in Wisconsin this week, they're also stealing the show in Fargo. Air travel can be stressful, but a new art installment at Fargo's Hector Airport is designed to calm travelers. And what's more calming than a cow? Six works by local artists featuring cows now hang in the baggage claim area. The exhibit is the first of an ongoing project to display local art around the town. The pictures will be changed every three to four months. It's sponsored by the Arts Partnership as part of its Artworks program. And now here's a look at the agri-weather forecast for the upcoming week. The month of October started out really cold especially right in the Northern Plains, North Dakota in particular, and up into Southern Canada. There are signs the second half of October won't exactly be warmer because the averages drop on down. Cooler weather is typical the second half of October than the first half, but it may be less anomalously cold. And here's the deal. It's all around that West Coast ridge of high pressure, which is showing some signs of breaking down. So what has been a very cold, wet pattern may be evolving into a not-so-cold, maybe a little less stormy second half of October. So here we are right now. There's some freezing weather dropping down in through uh, the uh, Northern Plains area this weekend. Much of this area surrounding it cool on the uh, southeast side of this deep area of low pressure. It's fairly warm along the eastern seaboard, and of course it's been ridiculously warm up in Alaska. Well, this cold weather is not just suddenly going to go away, but over the next couple of weeks, we'll watch this West Coast Ridge begin to break down, especially in about a week. And that's going to send the cold weather shifting a little bit. The jet is expected to kind of split into a more of a milder pattern for the middle part of October. And while it's not exactly going to be a radical warm-up for the Northern Plains, it may be a lot less cold. This weekend, early this week, areas of rain and snow passing through the Northern Plains again. There will likely be a few rounds of this over the next few days, and then things are going to gradually kind of just simmer down a little bit. Maybe one more rain system middle of the week as we get into that second week of the forecast. Overall, I think things will be a lot drier. There could be some southwest tropical moisture, few areas of rain here and there, but not as much widespread mo moisture. So again, the idea here is that the second half of October, say around October 15th on, a little less cold and a little less rain and snow in the Northern Plains. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to seven feet deep with boot sizes of four to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. With the all-new GreenFit system from Rykart, Plug and Play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Rogue Gators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. 
Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher-performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. My name is Joel Kaler owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstalk Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra-high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. The full-scale sugar beet harvest started this week in the Red River Valley. The strong harvest conditions and relative profitability are keeping share prices high. American Crystal is predicting 30 to 31 tons per acre. While many commodity prices have plummeted, sugar beet prices are somewhat protected by federal policies that limit production and imports. That's helped drive share prices up 28% from a year ago. This is the second early beet harvest in a row for Sydney's sugars on the North Dakota-Montana border. The company has 110 growers and they're seeing strong yields and sugar content. They started pre-pile harvest September 10th and the factory started processing on the 12th. The dry weather is helping them get off to a strong start. The company is projecting just over 32 tons per acre. With the size crop we're, we're getting, the million plus uh, size crop, the early start is essential and, and, and beneficial to us uh, slicing all our beets and, and having a good run at, here at the factory. We haven't broke down yet, so things are pretty good. Yeah. It, uh, it's drier than we thought it was going to be for this early in the game. And uh, we're just hoping for good sugar. It sounds like they're bringing in pretty good sugar already. So we're hearing anywhere from 17 to 18 sugars, and that is actually phenomenal for this early in the game. Sydney Sugars is a wholly owned subsidiary of American Crystal Sugar. The Midwest has the best sheep marketing opportunities in the country for fed and feeder lambs and even cull ewes. That was the focus of the South Dakota Sheep Growers Convention last weekend in Brookings. Producers learned about how market leaders like Sioux Falls Regional in Worthing are helping them to get the best price available. We have buying stations, public markets, and we also have some contract opportunities that occur in this region. To gain market share, the chair of the American Lamb Board shared research identifying bad flavored carcasses, which are pulled at the packing plant. So that we can get any lambs that might happen to get into uh, the, the supply chain that have an off flavor to get those lambs out of the supply chain. They hope that will increase lamb consumption above the one pound per person annually. Women may do many of the same jobs as men, but it doesn't mean they have to wear the same clothes. We'll explain after this. Stephis. We have representatives everywhere. Through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota, we can find a buyer for what you were selling. We know how to market your farmland or equipment. Give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes Way. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift load and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. 
Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Many women work in traditionally male-dominated jobs, but that doesn't mean they should wear the same clothes. Katie Pinky found a business that sells workwear specially designed for women. So we're at the Big Iron Farm Show in Rosie's Workwear booth, and Abby is with Rosie's Workwear. So tell me a little bit about Rosie's Workwear. It started in California. Yeah, sure. Uh, we're a small family-run business. Uh, my aunt started it 15 years ago. She did welding, couldn't find anything to fit her. It was all car hearts back then. The crotch was down to her knee, and she's like, hey, I can't do my job sufficiently and safely. So she came up with overalls for women. And there's obviously a niche for it. There's a lot of hardworking women out there, no matter if they're in ag or construction or gardeners, landscapers. So it kind of goes all over the spectrum. So. Why do women choose a Rosie's product over trying to wear a men's product? Yeah. Well, first of all, it fits your body type better. You can do your job more sufficiently. With Carhartts, they're really boxy and it's a hazard too. It's a work hazard for women to work in men's clothes because they don't fit you the right way ours do. So we specialize in that. I've never bought a pair of Rosie's before. Okay. I plan to today. I'm six feet tall. Six Are they tall. going to be long enough for me? Yes. There is a lady who is six foot four and she fits them perfect. So I've been visiting with Abby and my friend Kara, who I talked her into being here, and then Kat, who actually wore her rosies today to the show. So Abby, tell me a little bit about what I'm wearing. Sure, so you're wearing the water resistant overalls. Um, they only come in smoke right now, but they have so many pockets. You got these great little pockets that you can pull out. I've had ladies put eggs in them, then put them back in, screws, nails. So basically what I'm saying is you have so many pockets, you're gonna lose all your items in them. I can see that women have young kids. They're gonna like put the pacifier in one pocket. They're gonna put the toy to entertain. I would have like a graham cracker or something yeah. in it as well. I love the product and it was a really fun discovery. You coming to your first big agriculture show in Fargo, yeah. North Dakota. What have you learned about women in the upper Midwest? I've learned that you guys are very tall and I need to bring larger sizes to fit your length. Yeah, so, so I think it's the Scandinavian, <laughs> Scandinavian uh, sure. ancestry. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. As you might have guessed from their logo, Rosie's was named out of respect for Rosie the Riveter, the famous World War II symbol of women who filled home front jobs. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.